Hi everyone, my name is Li Cheng. I am a student from the University of Edinburgh. Today I will be presenting our survey paper, Multi-Agent Reinforcement Learning for con Character Control. Before that, uh, I would like to memorize Professor Cooney on behalf of my supervisor, Professor Taku Kumula. Professor Cooney was the supervisor of his supervisor, Dr. Yoshihisa Shinagawa. Professor Kuni worked with the Shaolinji Kenpo Association to analyze the nature of human kinematics and dynamics. This was called the Shaolinji Project. The project was passed over from generation to generation, and he was the fifth student who inherited the project. The project then developed into a character animation project, and he is still working on this topic. He really appreciates Professor Cooney's supervision and support when he was a student. Reinforcement learning is a very popular area in machine learning. It is frequently seen in applications in various fields, such as autonomous driving, game playing, and many others. The key idea that makes reinforcement learning different from supervised learning and unsupervised learning is that it learns from interactions with an environment and approximates some reward based, based on these interactions to help reinforce its decisions in that environment. Here, T is the time step, S is the state, R is the reward, and A is the action and specifically at state st-1, an agent takes an action at, then the environment will change to a new state st, and the agent will receive a reward rt from the environment. The main target for the agent is to learn to take actions that will maximize the total reward it receives, or more precisely, the return, which is the discounted sum of rewards. There are three common learning approaches for reinforcement learning agents. The first one is called value-based methods. An agent learns a value function indicating how good an action is under the current state, and it takes actions with the maximum value. The second one is called policy-based methods. An agent directly learns the policy function which takes the current state as input and output an action which will finally lead to a maximum return. The third one is called vector critic, which is a combination of the first two. It learns a value function and a policy function at the same time. Multi-agent reinforcement learning is just an extension in reinforcement learning with multiple agents in the same environment. And there are some important concepts exclusive to multi-agent reinforcement learning. The first one is non-stationarity. Since each agent's policy is changing as training progresses, the environment becomes non-stationary from the perspective of any individual agent. An agent will possibly perceive a different state after taking the same action at the same state with other agents having different policies. And therefore, it will learn, it will learn a poorer policy. Centralized training and decentralized execution architecture is an effective solution in dealing with the non-stationary problem. Decentralized execution means the agent make decisions normally by choosing actions based on their partial observations. The centralized training part means at training time, the critics can have access to extra information which are not available at runtime, for example, the observations from other agents. This is usually possible for computer graphics applications and I'll introduce some algorithms that have the centralized training and decentralized execution set up later. Self-play is a method frequently used in multi-agent competition environment, 
where agent learns by competing with itself. The idea behind this is that the agent will learn better if it competes with an opponent with a similar skill level. I'll introduce some in interesting applications based on self-play later. Now I'll introduce some typical multi-agent reinforcement learning algorithms. Value decomposition networks is a classic multi-agent reinforcement learning algorithm with centralized training and decentralized execution setup. This algorithm assumes that the joint value function can be decomposed into individual value functions, and there is only a group reward available. Therefore, during training, the joint value function is learned, and with the sum relationship, the individual value functions are learned as well. Then, at runtime, the agents pick actions to maximize their individual value functions based on their own observations. And again, due to the sum relationship, these actions taken would also maximize the joint value function. With this, with this design, uh, VDN has two shortcomings. One is it ignores extra state information. And the other is the representational relation between the individual value function and the joint value function is limited to the simple summation. QMix is an algorithm very similar to VDN. It resolves VDN's problems by using a mixing network, which takes the state information as input to generate weights that allows more representational relationship between the joint value function and individual value functions. The weights in the mixing network are constrained to positive, so that maximizing individual value functions maximizes joint value functions still holds. Multi-agent deep deterministic policy gradient has an exceptional centralized training and decentralized execution structure. It is an actor critic method that each agent learns a policy function and a value function. The critic can take extra information as input during training. For example, observations and actions from other agents. And during the runtime, the agents just use the policies they learned and make decisions merely based on their own observations, which is very smartly designed. Moreover, since they have individual critics, the agents can be cooperative, competitive, or both, which makes its usage range wider. If you want to use multi-agent reinforcement learning in your research task and not sure which algorithm to pick, I would recommend trying this one first. Now I'll introduce some amazing applications in computer graphics with multi-agent reinforcement learning. StarCraft 2 is a sci-fi real-time strategy video game, which is the new milestone for deep reinforcement learning due to its large, partially observable observation space and large action space. DeepMind's StarCraft 2 AI AlphaStar uses prioritized, fictitious self-play, which picks opponents with probabilities proportional to the win rate against the agent, allowing the agent to compete with the problematic opponent more frequently. Thin Mind says AlphaStar reached a grandmaster level which can be 99.8% of the human players, including, including some professional players. OpenAI set up a hide-and-seek environment with two hiders and two seekers, together with some boxes and ramps as tools. They use self-play to train agents with opponents that are at an appropriate level. And the centralized training and decentralized execution setup with proximal policy optimization algorithms to optimize the policies. As shown in the video, after millions of training steps, 
the agents are able to take very reasonable and impressive actions. DeepMind shows a 2v2 physically based football simulation. The agents are first trained to imitate motion capture skills of running and turning. Then they are trained by reinforcement learning through mid-level drills to obtain skills such as dribbling, kicking, and shooting. Finally, the teams are trained to coordinate by multi-agent reinforcement learning. As shown in the video, results are very impressive since the agents have clear sign of learning simple real-world tactics both in attack and defense. Apart from those amazing applications, there are still some interesting challenges on multi-agent reinforcement learning applications in computer graphics to consider. First is the variable number of agents, where agents joining or leaving the environment will pose negative influences on learning for other agents, and it is commonly seen in applications like first-person shooting games where non-player characters can be killed by the players and respawn by the system. Another topic is heterogeneous agents where the observation space and action space is different for different agents. This will cause the weights in the neural networks that process the inputs not shareable among the agents in a centralized training and decentralized execution setup. And self-play methods would also struggle as the opponents are not similar anymore. In this paper, we first introduced some key ideas in reinforcement learning and multi-agent reinforcement learning. Then we review some typical multi-agent reinforcement learning algorithms with decentralized training and decentralized execution architecture. We also review some exciting multi-agent reinforcement learning applications in the field of computer graphics. Finally, we talked about some challenges that need to be tackled. Like many other machine learning applications, multi-agent reinforcement learning in computer graphics is still very young. Many things are still to be explored. We will expect more breakthroughs in the foreseeable future. This is the end of my presentation, thanks for listening.